Okay, sorry, the TV's on and the microwave, <laughs> microwave, <laughs> air conditioner is on. I've been going through some of my craft things. I'm almost, I would say, more than halfway done, except for those containers behind. But see those envelopes? Those are going to be mailed out to some of my subscribers who have sent me things or whatever and um, I had their mailing list so I am going to mail those out today and hopefully surprise a few of you. Hi everyone, Great Power 60 here. Um, so today I thought I would take a look at some of my um, 12 by 12 papers that I purchased at my multi-craft store and I thought I, I think I got the idea from one of the girls online on YouTube um, that was using up some 12 by 12s to make policy envelopes or envelopes of any kind and I guess that's what they're called so I decided that some of my odd shaped um, papers that I would use those and create some little envelopes with them and I thought that was a great way to use up some of that stash because I haven't been using it and um, so right now you're just watching me go through the process and because of the funny shape I wanted to make sure that it glues down in those little pointy areas those little rounded areas where the um, double-sided tape didn't go so these are pretty basic everyone I think pretty much everyone knows how to make these kind of envelopes they're pretty basic I'm not going to give you any particular measurements because um, each one of these odd shaped or funny border curly 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 borders not curly borders but you know what I mean with the unusual shape of the borders um, the measurements can be off. It could be, you know, um, not the same as yours. So I thought these would make pretty envelopes to mail out or store, if you want to use them for storage, um, different craft supplies and so on. What I'm also using now is my um, packing tape and I just wanted to reinforce it because they're so delicate. The edges are so delicate. A lot of these, actually almost all of my policy or envelopes that I've made, um, I've added the packing tape at the bottom so that they won't get caught in machines, whatever kind of mailing machines there are. And uh, it just reinforces it. And I thought that is so pretty. And I kind of liked um, using that idea. Now I'm going to show you a couple that I've made. Um, I'm not in frame properly, but it gives you an idea that I've used some of these different sizes. And um, what I didn't like, uh, I think it was Dina was using those kind of address cards and I didn't like it so um, that's why I kind of shook my finger there I didn't like it for mine hers turned out beautifully but for my particular needs and for what I need what I want to do um, the less work the better so I've made quite a few now I'm going to go through the process of showing you um, where it can you can make boo-boos or where you can um, find difficulty in folding these if you have these type of papers and I don't know too many people who do but if you do so I'm looking at the bottom here saying okay I would like to have that showing so um, I'm kind of trying to measure so that all of the edges now I realized that I wanted the the little word love there so I want to put it on the bigger side of the fold 
So that's what what I was doing. I think I think roughly it's around three and a three and a quarter, but uh, at I score at three and a quarter and, and at nine. Um, but some of them vary. It could be three and a half. Could be. But the top and bottom are all one inch. So that's what I did. I scored that at one inch. And while you're watching that, I'm going to have a sip of my tea. So I didn't use a um, bone folder to fold these because I didn't want it too crisp. And because the paper is aging, it's getting a little older, um, maybe a little more brittle, I wanted it to be kind of a soft fold rather than a crisp fold. Now I'm just angle cutting, cutting along the score line. My suggestion, though, is that you fold it before you do this angle cutting, but it doesn't matter. Fold it to make sure that the the folds, um, the side, and the each side will um, match. Because if you don't, then you're going to have to go through a little bit more of a process. So I'm going to show you in a second here, I believe, is... Um, where there's a little bit of a boo-boo. All right, so I'm folding it down and folding it, and then I realized that it doesn't cover completely. There's a gap there, so that means I've got to score it again and, um, and snip it again. So if I had folded it the first time, then I wouldn't have had to go to all that trouble. But that's how we learn. So I was trying to figure it out, and it was, I think, about a quarter of an inch that I needed to score down. So now that I've scored it down a quarter of an inch, I'm going to have to do some more snipping. And it's just a little bit. It's not a big deal. Just I wouldn't have had to snip twice if I had folded the first time and measured it. And again, as I said, when I use my double-sided tape for, um, for closure, I also like to use a little bit of um, liquid glue to reinforce it. And I was just measuring to get those a little straighter. Although now that I think about it, it was kind of silly because it's going to be covered if it's the bottom. <laughs> it wouldn't matter if it's not measured. But at the top one where you open it, that would be uh, nice to have that kind of trimmed and even. So that's what I was doing with some of that paper. I was kind of, you know, I wanted to do a little bit of crafting and I wanted to kind of look at some of the papers that I had. And I have so much of these pretty, um, unusual shaped bordered papers that um, I thought that using them as envelopes would be really um a neat thing to do to kind of use up the paper and keep the pretty corners because I could cut up this paper and use it for anything but um, I just thought that uh, these envelopes would be pretty and would be nice to get one in the mail and as I start getting back into doing a little bit of crafting it would be nice to have um, 
some things to send out or to store. Have pretty, you know, pretty papers to either store things or mail things out or whatever I want to do with them. So again, I'm adding just a little bit of glue along the edges that um, need to be reinforced so that it will stay closed. Now I don't have to do that if I was going to use my um, packing tape to go down to make sure um, that not only the bottom was secure but that the um, sides were secure as well. So I should have sped up this part so that you wouldn't be bored watching this and listening to me talk and talk. I really had enjoyed doing this. It was just sort of an easy way to get back into crafting just by looking at some of my paper stash as I was sorting through some of my craft stuff and uh, packing up the uh, donation boxes. So here you're seeing I'm reinforcing it because I just didn't trust the mail would, um, that the paper would stay secure in the mail. So I think that this was kind of a nice, easy way for me to ease my way back into crafting by doing something uh, productive and these can be stored and it doesn't have to be a specific size you can make them any size you want anyway guys i want to thank you for joining me today i am going to show you um, two other items that um, i found in my stash and it's coming up here One of the things that I had bought was this flower punch. We are memory keepers flower punch. I think I tried to use it once and I didn't like it. And I'm kind of looking at it again. And I think in my next video, I'm going to attempt to use it. And if I don't like it, I'm going to get rid of it. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me today on my crafty day. Hope to do more soon. And uh, I really appreciate your support. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.